the first Portuguese in history and what a match. A really memorable final here. Over two hours and 18 minutes, Jao Sosa breaking the heart of Julian Benito. And we have a new star. Oh, look, a new star to merge. Jao Sosa from Portugal. Great for tennis in Portugal. Viva Portugal. What a performance. 6-4 in the third, and remember he saved that championship point in the second set. And look at the emotion there with his coach, Marquez. All credit to the winner, but I just feel as well for Julian Benito, a heartbreaker in his ninth final. He may never get this chance again. So this is how he did it. This is match point. Just misses down the line and it's all over. Look at the emotion for Jao Sosa. All credit to him. What well, a match. Yeah, what a week he's had, Paul. Of course, knocking out the top seed and world number four, David Ferrer in the quarterfinals, and then he kept it up in the semifinals as well against Jurgen Melzer. Oh, look, it, it, we have a new star here, but I love the way he could. Benito kept asking the question, kept asking the question. He just really took a little dip early in the third set, Julian Benito, and then the end it came back to haunt him. Well, it's a fantastic final. Some final that uh, we're going to remember for a long time here. So we'll have more from uh, Kuala Lumpur in a moment, and we'll have the prize presentation, and we'll also speak to our new champion here in Malaysia. Still looking for his first title. He's been bitterly disappointed. He's never been right except his opponent came up with a shot on match point. My goodness. Well, he looks close to tears and we can understand that. Right. It's cruel. Sport is cruel sometimes, but that's the enduring attraction of it. You can't script it. You never know what's going to happen. Well, Nick Fryer giving uh, Julian Benito a pat on the back, the tournament director here in Kuala Lumpur. And we no doubt we'll see Julian Benito again because he's much loved by the fans here. But he is the champion, Jao Sosa of Portugal. And he has entertained the fans this week, hasn't he, Paul? Oh, absolutely. He's got a great game, lovely smile, he's got personality, he's got spirit, he's a great competitor. And a big future ahead of him. Now he's got one ATP title. This will be the first of many. His coach can share in as well. Federico, Federico Marquez. These are so hard to win these titles. Well, I think his uh, ranking will probably break in the top 50, and that just shows you how far he's climbed. He was in the semi-finals last week. In St. Petersburg, he's getting it at $158,000 for winning his title. Feel if he would have been in the 80s and 90s, now into the 40s, and that's terrific in two weeks. And what a platform for next year. And, and the confidence you get from winning an ATP title. I mean, you, know, you can't measure how much he's going to be in big batches next year when he's playing some of the great players of the game. He'll get openings, but he's virtually only played four or five ATP tournaments the whole year. Next year he's straight in, in most weeks. Well, of course, the way that he's played here, it's been great for Malaysia, but it means he can't get the qualifiers up in Beijing, so he's going to have to relook at his schedule for the rest of the year. No, he's earned a rest, I think, after the last two weeks. Uh, yes, uh, he won't be in Beijing, but you know he can now plan next year knowing he'll be straight in every week. He'll be in the Grand Slams, he'll be in the, in the Masters 1000 tournaments. What, a, what an exciting year he's got to look forward to now. Look at poor Julian Benito. Yeah. Gee. Who won and who lost looking at that picture? Well, let's hope that Julian Benito does come back next year. Let's hope he does break through because he is a wonderful player. Such a classic French style. And gave it all. Showed a lot of courage, didn't he? He's expressionless. He's, shattered. he's a shattered man. I really hope he can win the title in his career.
it's uh, it's des desperate for him right now. It's the second final of uh, 2013, also appearing at Rotterdam. So let's have a look at the uh, ATP rankings and the race for London as of the 23rd of September with uh, Paul McNamee. So lots to play for still in the season. Absolutely, it's Dan Fabrico. He came here to KL, hung on the way to place with Gasco losing the semis in Bangkok. So he kept, uh, by making the semi, he kept in eighth spot and he's trying to chase Roger Federer. But look at the top of the list, Nadal and Djokovic. Um, and Andy Murray, of course, winning Wimbledon after 77 year hiatus, hiatus for British players. So, uh, you know, tennis is pretty healthy. Indeed, it's uh, very exciting stuff here. Thanks to Paul McNamee, my co commentator, we have a new champion here in Malaysia. His name is Jao Sosa. He is from Portugal, the first Portuguese player to win an ATP World Tour singles title. Shattering the dreams of Julian Benito, who was in his ninth final. Let's hope we see the Frenchman once again because he really won the hearts of the fans here in Kuala Lumpur. Jao Sosa. Let's raise a glass to him because he is the man at the moment in Wednesday tennis and we will see plenty more of him throughout 2013 and 2014. It's goodbye from the Putra Stadium in Kuala Lumpur and congratulations to Jao Sosa.